Hello, so this is a video on how to find the minimum and maximum value of a quadratic function. Uh, so by the end of this module, you will be able to find the minimum and maximum of the quadratic function and then interpret that meaning in a real life scenario. So the first step is to know what a minimum and maximum looks like. So uh, if a graph opens up, like the first example, it's going to have a minimum value where the vertex is. If it opens down like this, it is going to have a maximum value. Uh, to think about this is if you throw a ball up in the air, it's going to look like the second example, so it has a maximum height, versus the first example is more of like a pendulum swinging where it has the lowest height. So to tell this, we actually tell it by the a value. So to determine uh, the if it opens up or down, we look at the a value. The a value is the coefficient or the number in front of the x squared. So if a is positive, it has a maximum or it has a minimum value, and if a is negative, it has a maximum value. So for the two examples on the bottom, the first step we have to do is we have to solve for either y or f of x. However, um, it is, uh, is written y or f of x. So for the number 5 here, uh, I'm going to add y on both sides because that's going to just make it easier, uh, get y positive, and I'm going to be left with that. And now I'm going to the, subtract the 10 and get my example. Uh, so my equation for that, I recognize that it's a negative five in front of the x squared, which a is negative in that case, so it's going to be a maximum. In the other case, all I have to do is add the x on both sides. I'm left with that equation. And I look at the four, so it's positive, so it's going to have a minimum. The next is a follow-up from graphing in standard form uh, where you have to identify the vertex and give the minimum and maximum value and also the domain and range. So the vertex is always at the bottom most or the topmost part of the U, uh, which in this case is negative 3 comma negative 5 which means this has a minimum value at negative 5. Uh, that's the bottommost point. So domain is going to be all real numbers. So I can plug any x value in there and it's going to be, uh, it's going to give me a result. What I'm not going to get out is the range. So the range is everything above negative 5. So I don't have any numbers that are negative uh, below negative 5. So I would write that as y is greater than or equal to negative 5 because negative 5 is my bottom of the graph and it, everything is above it. So there's no, no answer that's going to be like negative 8. I'm never going to get that because my graph is not down there. Same thing with a maximum problem. I identify the vertex. In this case it's 1, 5. So it has a maximum value of 5 but now my domain is all, all real numbers. My range is everything below 5. So it's y is less than or equal to 5. Because it can be 5, it gets up to 5, but then it's below. So if you think about a ball flying through the air, maybe it goes 5 feet high, but it didn't go 6 feet. And that's what the range is. And then it gets to graphing where if you remember graphing in standard form, uh, I have to find the axis of symmetry first, which is x equals the opposite of b over 2a. So I do have to find my a, b, and c first. And then plug those a, b, and c into the opposite of b over 2a. So if it's 4, it's negative 4 over 2 times 2. Multiply those and get negative 1. After that, that's my axis of symmetry, so I have to find the coordinates of my vertex. So I plug the negative 1 in, and I get a negative, 
negative one, negative one. So I get y equals negative one. Um, that is my vertex. So I have to identify that the vertex is a maximum or minimum. So a is positive because it's positive two. So it's a minimum and it's going to be a minimum at negative one. So now I'm going to graph the function. So the first thing I do, I just got the vertex, so I'm going to graph it. Then I'm going to draw in my axis of symmetry. And then something that's going to save me a bunch of times is I draw in the y-intercept. The y-intercept is always the 0 comma c. It's always going to be the c value. Uh, if I plug in 0 for x, I always get my c value. So I can plot that right away. So you'll notice that it, in this case, it's this point right here, which is 0, 1. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to reflect that over the axis. So I took this point and I just reflected it over because it's an axis of symmetry. Symmetry means it's the same on both sides. So I just took the point and flipped it over that axis of symmetry. And now I can draw my parabola. And um, I've already stated my, it's a minimum at negative 1. But the one thing I didn't do was identify the domain and range. So my domain is going to be all real numbers. And my range is going to be everything above negative 1. So that is y is greater than or equal to negative 1. In my next example, again, I have to graph. So I identify my a, b, and c. In this case, when I plug in my axis of symmetry, I get a half. Remember, I can always get halves or decimals or whatever. Uh, so I would then plug this in and get my, uh, my y value of the vertex as 2 and a quarter or 2.25 if I evaluate that. Um, and then, so I have this vertex, it's at a half and it's at a quarter. So graphing that, I just have to estimate where those are. So um, that vertex is approximately right there. So it's halfway through the first box and a little bit up into uh, after the second box. I then can uh, graph my, my axis of symmetry. And then graph, in this case, my y-intercept is 2. So you'll notice this uh, point here at 2. And then I reflect it over. So the fact that it's halfway through means that it's going to go another half on the other side, which makes it perfect for 1. And I can draw in my uh, parabola based on that. Uh, remember, the axis symmetry is just acts as a mirror, so it's the same distance away on both sides. And now I can identify my, it's a maximum problem, so it's upside down, so it's a maximum, so it's going to have a maximum at 2 and a quarter or 2.25, which means the domain never changes for quadratics, it's all, all real numbers, and my range has to be less than, or y is less than or equal to 2 and a quarter, or everything below. Uh, two and a quarter. The next problem is more of a word problem uh, and it's used in businesses all the time because every business wants to be maximize profit or maximize the revenue. You, most of the times it's the revenue that you get and uh, in this case it's when uh, people are paying for tickets or buying things. So people buy it at a certain price but if they increase the price they'll usually get less people that buy that item. And if they decrease the price, you usually get more people that buy it. So in this example, um, we have 1,200 people uh, that can be seated in this auditorium. And it's been fill, full, so that's good. But because it's full, this owner wants to take the cost of the tickets at $5 and wants to increase it. So he's kind of guessing that uh, if you increase it 50 cents, then you're going to get 100 people that are going to not come now. So they want to know what ticket price will maximize profit. So there's two methods that you can do this. So profit is always the people coming and at times the price of the tickets. That's how much you're going to get. So the first way you can do it is you can always make a table. 
So you can say price, people, and then profit and revenue. So in this case, if the price is $5 and you have 1,200 people, you're making $6,000 every night. But if you increase it, so let's say you increase it 50 cents, so now the price is 550. Uh, now only 1,100 people will show up and that will only get you 6,050 bucks. So now you're making more $50 more dollars than this. But if you increase it another time to $6, only 1,000 people come. So you're back to that 6,000 uh, revenue or profit. And if you increase it even more, e less people come, which means you're making actually less money. So you notice that this call, this row right here, this price at 550 actually maximizes the, the profit. So that's the price that they should keep it. So you can use a table for this if it's a simplistic version like this. But most of the time, you actually have to use quadratic function to do this. So to do that, um, you have to create two parentheses. So you always say, what's my start value? Uh, and then you add or subtract in whatever it's changing to times an X. Now the X in this case is like the amount of changes that you're going to make. So in this case, X is the amount of changes to the price of the ticket that the auditorium makes. So I can do uh, price times people. Uh, these are going to be two parentheses. So the price starts at $5 here. And then I increase it, which means it's a plus, 50 cents every time. So that 0.5 is the 50 cents every time X is the amount of changes I'm making. The people, I start at the 1,200, which means that's my start value. But now I'm going fewer, which is the subtracting 100 people for every change I make. Now what I do is I have to distribute or multiply these two expressions. There's a way I could do FOIL, which is I I'm basically taking the 5 and I'm distributing into the second number or the 0.5 times the second parentheses. Or you can use what I call the box method, where you create almost like a table. And you take your two parentheses, so I have the 5 plus the 5, 0.5x, and I have the 1200 minus the 100x. And I create a box out of it. And now I multiply individuals. So I would do the 5 times the 1,200, which would get me 6,000. I would do the 0 0.5 times the 1,200, which would get me 600x. Remember, the x stays with it. I would do the 5 times the negative 100x, so I would get negative 500x. And the 0 0.5 times the negative 100x, remember, x times x leads to an x squared. So I would get negative 50 times x squared. Now I can write my expression for this combining my middle terms. These are my only terms here that are the same are the x's. So I'm going to take this negative 50 here, x squared, that's going to be my a value. I combine these middles, so 600x minus 500x is 100x, and then plus the 6,000. I now have an equation that now I can identify my A, B, and C, find my axis of symmetry. In this case, it comes out one. That one represents the amount of changes in price. So in this case, it's changing 50 cents. So I need to change the, that 50 cents one time. So if I started at $5, I make one change in the price, which makes it 550. So that's how I find the price. But like in other examples, I take that x, which is the amount of changes, and I plug it into my equation, and I solve. So when I plug in my equation and solve, I get that 6,050. And that is where I find my maximum revenue that I'm going to make. So in this case, by increasing it one time, I would make a maximum revenue of $6,050. So that's how I do it with a quadratic function. Now, this one was easy with the table to tell, but oftentimes it's multiple changes that I'm making. So you don't want to use a table all the time. You want to use a quadratic function that I can easily just find the maximum using some math.
these are the three practice problems. Please try these. Uh, the first two are finding the vertex and determining if it's a maximum or minimum. And the second one is that word problem where you actually have to define the, the function and find how many changes you need to make. And that ends module four notes. Please complete those practice problems and come in with any questions. Thank you.